We're extremely lucky to have this panel of real, real experts, each with their own scars and medals to show, each of whom has an extraordinarily deep understanding of the operational, political, financial context of local government, especially in the larger cities, and each of whom has an exceptionally strong track record of contributing real blood, sweat and tears to the reconstruction of South Africa over the past 30 plus years. I think it's what's really fascinating for us is that they span the period of, of, of the design and, and implementation of our local government system through to, to playing very senior roles in the administration and, 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 and operation of, uh, operations of that system. So I'm not going to say more about them, they'll speak for themselves briefly. I'm just going to briefly introduce you now to the Cities of Integrity Initiative which is part of the anti-corruption evidence research program funded by the UK government. Uh, it's driven by the African Center for Cities at UCT together with CURP, the Center for Urban Research and Planning at the University of Zambia. Uh, the leaders of the project, the research leaders are professors Vanessa Watson and Gilbert Siami. And the project focuses primarily on South Africa and Zambia with a, a, a view to expanding to the the, the, the region, the, the whole region. The starting point of Cities of Integrity, which comes through in the video that you've just seen, is an acknowledgement that corruption is a massive constraint to development, and specifically urban development. Um, you know, the, we, the surveys that have been carried out show you know, globally, one in five people have been asked for a bribe to receive a municipal service, a public service in a city. In, in sub-Saharan Africa, it's one, one in three. Uh, Transparency, Transparency International's 2019 survey showed that 64% of South Africans, 66% of Zambians, believed that corruption was inexorably worsening in their countries, not improving. And that's in a context of sub-Saharan Africa, where real estate, this was made also in the, the, the video we've seen, is the largest category of foreign direct investment. It's one of the drivers of our economies. And, and partly linked to that is that we have five of the 10 hottest urban land markets are in African cities. So the, 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 the seeds for corruption in the urban development process are, are, are very well planted and well watered. Uh, for example, I've been working recently in Kigali, where peri-urban land that is converted into urban land increases in value by more than 1,000 times. So the, the windfall profits are, are massive. So our project starting point is that corruption in African cities has to be tackled. It's a key challenge of our time. But we have, we've chosen to focus on a, on a particular angle, uh, a slightly different angle to the conventional angle of detecting, policing, and punishing corruption. These are really important, and we, we don't want to take take our eye off those balls at all. But we've, we've also, we've opted to explore the potential for building professional integrity in the city building process uh, with a particular focus on the urban planning profession. Our contention is that without concerted efforts to build and strengthen accountability within the key professions involved in urban development, the other efforts will be severely compromised, not least because of the, the particularly pernicious and universal character of corruption in the urban development process. And I think that we, we want to emphasize that we certainly don't characterize corruption uh, in urban development as a uniquely African problem. It is very, very clearly and, 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 and obviously a, a universal problem. It's part of the, the ways in which cities grow and are managed. But we, th we argue that given the context of Africa, the, the rapidly urbanizing context of Africa, it's, it's essential that we identify the strategies that can tackle it effectively. Stephen, just uh, going straight to, to, to your question. I mean, I completely agree with uh, the two points that uh, Dr. Oliver has raised. Um, as, 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 as uh, the whole issue of political interference and the unhealthy relationship between land and property uh, sector. I don't want to dwell on that because I'm sure you'll probably talk more about that. I want to raise other three things which I found were equally very, very important. 
uh, 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 which I actually found specific this examples in the city of Troy. I found out soon after I was appointed in 2017 that more than 50% of the planners in the city were actually not registered with the planning profession in South Africa. So these are professionals that had actually allowed their registration to lapse. So that's actually quite significant, it's very important because registration with a professional body means that you are held accountable in terms of the code of conduct of that particular association should uh, you be found to actually uh, have uh, done something wrong, uh, uh, professionally speaking. And when you are not registered, you escape any punishment in relation to the association because effectively you are not a member of the association. And I found out that actually planners were doing this intentionally. So they would actually allow their professional registration to lapse. So that should actually be found to be involved in any acts of corruption in the city, that you would not actually be able to take them to the planning profession. And, and, and that was very interesting. Secondly, which was bizarre, was the city of Twani refused to pay for the fees for registration for the planners. Now, this doesn't make sense. Uh, it does not make sense because it means that uh, in that case where one of the senior planners or even the, uh, the city planner for that particular matter, uh, if it's involved, he or she's involved in an act of corruption, you will not be able to actually uh, 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 take them to their professional body and to be able to make sure that the code of conduct is applied to them uh, um, you know, uh, accordingly. Now, obviously, planning is one of them, but also project management. As a, as, as a profession, it's very linked uh, to city planning because most of the city projects are actually projects. If you build a reservoir, if, if you develop a new township, in cities we run these as projects. So project management skills are very important. I equally found not, not only planners, but project managers had actually allowed uh, uh, the, their registration to, to, you know, to lapse. Um, I, I made it a policy in the city while I was there that all the professionals must be registered. It actually now in the city, by the time I left, I had made it a policy that the city first must make sure that all our planners are registered. Number two, that the city then becomes responsible for paying for, pay for their registration. Because when that is the case, then I, I could then be able to actually take action against those when it was uh, necessary. Firstly, I, I would agree that, um, that, the, that the issues around uh, uh, political in interference and, 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 uh, and, 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 and appointing people that, that aren't particularly qualified to, to do the job, um, that uh, really is a breeding ground for corrupt activities to take place. Um, but but I think there's it, it also uh, sometimes um, certainly what 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 I have found is when when there is an absence of leadership, um, and I'm talking about ethical leadership. Also, obviously, it goes together with uh, a sound administrative leadership. Um, so, if if that kind of leadership at the top is is absent either at the level of the uh, city manager or at the level uh, of, of those that report to him or her uh, similarly on the political side whether 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 it is the it, it is the, the executive mayor or or members of the mayoral committee or, or the executive council where where that kind of leadership is lacking you find that um, the 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 the, uh, the breeding ground for corruption exponentially increases. I'm not saying you've you've mentioned the scars. Um, I'm not suggesting that it is plain sailing. <laughs> I've been through hell and I've got the ashes to prove it, as uh, Jim Steinman said. Uh, so so one must be able to. To, 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 not, uh, to not only recognize that these are the typical instances of, of, of corruption, but one must lay the foundation, the, this can give people the space 
to operate ethically and in good faith because the good faith part which i think is often under under uh, or not uh, emphasized enough um, that all of these matters matters are done in good faith if, if people act in good faith if politicians come to you in good faith and uh, they happen to ask about a particular issue then one can handle that in the normal course of events but it's often the bad faith part where if you don't do this then I will make sure that uh, that that this happens, or you know, you won't be reappointed. If you want to look where the real value is that local authorities are creating, it's in land and land enablement. And from a corruption perspective, we tend to ignore it. Um, it's something that the auditor general doesn't easily get to look at because. There's no money, I mean, you know, you may pay a, a license fee, an application fee, but there's no ways that the Auditor General can measure the value that's being created indirectly. There's no transfer of money from the municipality to the private developer. So if you're wanting to fiddle uh, and do backroom deals, let me tell you land a much better place to get involved in. Um, uh, 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 just for those of you that are, are taking notes. <laughs> so I was, I was intrigued um, as to what I would find in Cape Town. And the first thing, and this is just to reinforce a point that McKetty's made, the, the incestuous relationship that exists between the big property developers and the planning departments in the city uh, is gobsmacking. Um, the, the people employed by the, the developers, same thing I found, McKetsy, uh, they're all former city officials. So, that, I mean, they go out and they deliberately look for people that know how the system works and they know how to walk the corridors. And those people go back into the city, they spend almost as much time as they used to spend there walking the corridors, talking to people, networking, not necessarily doing corrupt deals, but it's, you know, influence, favors, gifts, rugby games, uh, trips here and there. And it's a very slippery slope. Uh, um, it, you know, it, it, uh, the, the kind of pressure that gets placed on officials to go along with particular strategies or applications is quite substantial. Um, but certainly they, 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 uh, uh, they do exist. The, the difficulty is, really, if, if you are not operating, if you are ethical, but you're operating in, in, in a disabling in, uh, environment, in a disempowering environment then you start to stick out like a sore thumb the issue of leadership is quite important and a lot of this what i found out when i got into the city was there was a general culture of fear of officials who were seriously bruised they had seen their colleagues fired they had seen their colleagues disciplined for refusing to implement quote unquote a political instruction so these are guys who are very, very edgy. So like Johan did what I did, I made myself a fall guy. So I instructed all the heads of my department. If you are having enormous pressure from your political principal, tell the political principal it is the city manager who instructed me to do so. Stephen, I mean, I don't want to say much. I think both Johan and Chip has uh, said a lot on this subject. Uh, suffice to say, a, trans a transparent system run by people without integrity, it's equally corrupt. So it's not only transparency. It has to be transparency, but it also has to be people with integrity. Because as Johan correctly points out, it is these people that even before a transparent meeting takes place, if you like, 
actually have to compile the specification for a tender. It's just there. By the time the evaluation takes place, which is the real uh, transparent or, or public space, those decisions have already been made. So, so you are on the money by saying professionals integrity is sacrosanct in this particular matter. And everything has to be done to, to assist and help professionals first to protect them, but secondly, to assist them to continue to operate in a very difficult circumstances around how you help them to continue to, uh, 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 to deal with issues of, 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 of integrity. A general principle, I think uh, greater transparency, shining a ray of sunlight into the darker recesses of local government decision-making is good. Uh, but on its own, it is an insufficient strategy. Um, and it's got to be, it's got to go hand in hand with a number of other interventions.